The Lamy CP1 was first released in 1974. It was designed by Gerd A. Mueller, who's the same mastermind that was behind the Lamy 2000. And we'll take a look at a direct comparison of those two models in just a moment. The pen is slim in the hand, mostly cylindrical, and primarily made out of metal. The top finial is flat. The bottom finial is on a separate piece from the rest of the body, and it's made out of plastic. The cap is cylindrical without any branding, and the clip is made out of brushed stainless steel. It's spring-loaded, very functional, and on the side, it does say Lamy. There's no step down to the barrel, and the cap is a pull-off cap which reveals a standard Lamy stainless steel nib. It has black laser engraving. This one says F for fine and Lamy. The section is a little bit tapered. It's made out of plastic with ribs that give you a nice good grip. In the hand, the pen is lightweight, well balanced, and the cap does post securely thanks to that plastic back finial. However, it back weights the pen, and I find in order to keep the pen balanced, I have to hold it back onto the barrel, which makes it a little bit unwieldy when writing. There's a step up to the barrel, which again is cylindrical down to the back plastic finial. For size comparisons, here's the Lamy CP1, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen and your standard Sharpie. At the top of the video, I mentioned that the CP1 was designed by the same mastermind as the Lamy 2000. And here we have the two pens side by side. You can see they share a lot of design similarities. Both are primarily matte black. The 2000 is made out of a brush macrolon where the CP1 is a anodized metal. Both have a brushed stainless steel clip that's hinged at the back. The 2000 is trapezoid in shape, whereas the CP1 is mostly rectangular and I find that the trapezoidal shape is a little more comfortable for actuating. The Lamy 2000 is a little bit longer and thicker than the CP1, and the CP1 has a cap that's flush to the barrel, whereas the Lamy 2000 has a step down to the barrel. The 2000 is a piston-filled pen, and the piston knob is well concealed with that brushed macrolon finish, whereas the CP1 is a cartridge converter pen. Let's take a look at these two uncapped. Uncapped, we see a few more differences. The CP1 uses Lamy's exposed nib that's stainless steel, whereas the 2000 uses a custom semi-hooded 14 karat gold nib. The section on the 2000 is made out of a brushed stainless steel, whereas the CP1 has a ribbed plastic section. The shape of the barrel on the Lamy 2000 is kind of bullet shaped that tapers on both ends, whereas the CP1 is primarily cylindrical. Let's take a look at these pens posted. Both caps post securely. However, the Lamy 2000 posts deeply where the CP1 is fairly shallow. In every configuration, the Lamy 2000 was slightly longer than the CP1, except for this one, where we can see that the CP1 is significantly longer. To disassemble the Lamy CP1, cap pulls off and the section unscrews from the barrel. As I mentioned, this is a cartridge converter pen. This converter is different than Lamy's standard converter. It's a little more narrow and it doesn't have nubs. And I'll post a link in the description to this model. The converter pulls right out. Now, unfortunately, the feed is not designed to be removed from this section, but you can remove the, the nib. You can either place some scotch tape on it and pull or carefully get a good grip with your fingers and, and pull. At this point, you have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll grab our section and our nib. The nib has two fins that line up with rails on the section. You line it up and push it in place. Then we have the converter that goes on the back, followed by the barrel that screws in. And lastly, our cap. And now we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Lamy CP1, today I selected Sailor Yamadori, which is a nice dark teal. Cap pulls off, and the section unscrews from the barrel. Here we want to make sure that the piston is all the way down.
Submerge the nib into ink and drop the piston. Go ahead and wipe off the excess ink. Put the barrel back on. Followed by the cap. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Lamy CP1. Cap pulls off. The nib is a stainless steel fine. And it is a very well-tuned nib. Um, it's smooth. It has maybe a hint of feedback, but not much. Uh, the flow is really good, and I really don't have many complaints. The ink was Sailor Yamadori for Flex. You don't get much in for reverse writing. It is very scratchy. Um, not much thinner than top ways up. And honestly, I would not recommend this one for reverse writing. The only saving grace, I guess, is that the feed kept up well. And let's take a look at how this compares with the Lamy 2000. This one is inked with the same Sailor Yamadori. And this one has an extra fine 14 karat nib. The nib on the 2000 is a lot smoother than the standard stainless steel, which is to be expected. Um, the flow hopefully it comes across decently on the camera, is better on the Lamy 2000. It's a, a darker line. And also the thickness of the line is actually pretty similar to the fine on the Lamy CP1, which is interesting. For reverse writing, the 2000 does a better job reverse writing. It's still very scratchy, but you can see that the line thickness is quite a bit thinner than the front way up. Um, and the feed keeps up pretty well. So what do I think of the Lamy CP1? If you like the aesthetic of the Lamy 2000 and are looking for a less expensive version, maybe you can't um, afford it at the time or you're a little hesitant to take something as costly as the 2000 out and about, this is a great option. It looks a lot like the Lamy 2000, but it's slimmer, um, which can be good for note taking, maybe is not the best for long-term writing. The ability to swap out virtually any size nib with this standard Lamy nib is a great feature to have. It's also easier to clean the Lamy 2000 since you are just dealing with a cartridge converter. It would have been nice to have an ink window like the Lamy 2000 has, um, but it's not really necessary since you can easily unscrew that back barrel. The pen thickness is probably going to be a little bit divisive. Some people like thin pens. This is pretty similar to holding like a number two pencil. Other people want something that's girthier, and I, I tend to fall on that spectrum, um, especially for long form writing. It's a little bit more ergonomic. And I would say probably the biggest Achilles heel to this is the cap posting ability. Yes, it's secure, but it becomes unwieldy just because the cap posts so shallow. So if that's not a big deal to you, I do think that Besides that, this is a fantastic pen. Um, 
a nice minimalist design and uh, again, a great pen to keep out and about for quick note taking. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.